In this episode of Super Sacento, I cannot believe I'm using this joke again. Hello you lot, Miller Connor here, welcome back to Super Sacento and after a few weeks off it's time to continue with the interior build. In the last episode we made these gorgeous black quilted leather door cards. I'm still not quite sure what I want to do though in terms of making sure the armrests attached to them do actually match a little bit better than the ugly and outdated grey that they currently are. A lot of you have been suggesting to me to do some sort of carbon fibre wrap or carbon dip or something like that on them, but I don't think that's going to work. The problem is the plastic they're made out of is textured. It's got loads of little dips and curves in it and it's got loads of little dimples in the plastic, presumably so your arm can grip onto it. What that means is if you were to dip it, wrap it, whatever, you would see all the dimples through the carbon effect. Carbon fibre is smooth and gloss. There's no dimples in it, so I don't think any sort of carbon effect is unfortunately going to work for them. In the meantime though, the next part of the interior makeover will be the gauges, because the pods for the speedo and for the rev counter are both at the moment grey, much the same as the dashboard, the armrests and most of the interior in the Seicento from the factory. That's not in keeping with my idea of a black and yellow colour scheme, so today we're going to fix it. But I'm not going to be using the ones that are in the car at the moment. Why you ask? Well the answer lies over there. The reason why I'm not pulling the ones that are in the car out for the minute is that I do of course have the ones from the old Super Sigento shell. What this means is that rather than rushing to get them out, get them painted, get them back in as quickly as possible, so I do of course still have gauges, I can take my time, do it slowly, do it thoroughly and properly to get the best finish possible. Now to undo these screws, obviously you undo them all, pull the guts out and then the cases are bare and ready to be painted. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver for this, but obviously if you're a YouTuber, you do of course have the magic of being able to snap your fingers and get jobs done with no time passing whatsoever. Watch, I'll show you. And there we have it, completely stripped, all gutted and not one tool used, apart from that one. But now the cases of the Speedo and the Rev Counter have been opened and of course we've got this back half of the Speedo that's come off to get the guts out of it and these are now ready to be prepped for a paint job. The very first thing we need to do is mask them up because of course there's no need to paint bits like these legs for the Rev Counter or of course the innards, all the clips, stuff like that. We don't need to paint that, it's just the outside bit. The next step is the sanding, and with interior plastics that are already quite soft and quite fragile, you don't want a really rough grit of sandpaper because you'll, if anything, do more damage than help them. I've gone for 500 grit sandpaper, and that should be perfect. It's a nice kind of really smooth grain, and it will just help key these up nicely so the paint finish is as good as possible. So without further ado, let's gently sand these down. Update, Mum brought me tea. Thanks, Mum. Oh, you are f***ing kidding me, right? So I've now switched to the other side of the cardboard that doesn't have tea spilt all over it and we can get on with sanding these down. And what I'm going to do is just be very, very gentle with it. You're not trying to damage it, you're not trying to scratch it, you're just trying to give it a gentle key just so that the paint sticks to it. So just a little buff and you can even start to feel when it changes because gradually as you sort of rub it down more and more, this plastic which does have a faint texture to it sort of loses that and it becomes nice and glassy smooth. So you can even see on camera there, look, the bit I've been sanding down is sort of greyer where I've taken some of the colour out of it, smoothed it down nicely. You can feel the difference between this being rough and this being smooth and that's going to be the difference between a good and a bad paint job is how smooth the surface you're painting onto is. This sort of thing's quite therapeutic I find because it's not difficult, it's not too time consuming but you just don't have to do it right obviously. You don't have to be fighting with bolts that don't undo, you don't have piles of grease all over you but it's fun, it's good, it's easy. I like this. I think that bit is pretty much done in terms of rubbing down, so to get these two bits done, cool YouTuber transition clicky thing, go! 
And with that, they are all done. All the pieces of plastic we're going to be painting today have now been rubbed down and they've got that lovely glassy smooth finish that we need to get the best possible paint finish on. However, partly because these have been in storage for months after the old Super Seicento shell was broken down and partly because they are just generally used pieces of plastic, they have got lots of little bits of dirt in them. Obviously there's the dust from rubbing them down, there's grease from greasy fingerprints and all kinds of crap that could potentially ruin your paint finish. So next up, we need to thoroughly clean them before we paint them. But be careful what you use because a friend of mine, he used some just normal plastic interior cleaner that you use when you're detailing your car. He used that to clean it before painting and after a few days following the painting, it kind of reacted with the chemicals and the cleaning stuff. What you want is some white spirit. This stuff is used for cleaning paint brushes, it's for cleaning paint off. So what we're gonna do, we've got a rag here, we've got our white spirit here, a little bit of this on there, rub it all down to make sure it's all completely clean of dust, grease, and any other crap that could ruin our paint, and then, finally, we can get on with it. Also, if you do get any white spirit on your hands, because I have just got some of my hands pouring it out there, uh, don't put your hands on your face, don't put your hands in your mouth, don't eat with them or anything else like that. White spirit is one of those things, it's not just recommended you don't get it near your face or your hands or whatever, you just shouldn't. So the white spirit is all starting to dry off now that I've done all three of these, that's taken what? Less than five minutes of cleaning. You can now see how dull all the plastic looks and that is a good thing. It shouldn't be shiny because if it's shiny, your paint finish probably isn't gonna be great when you come time to actually paint. Anyway, I'm gonna give these a few more minutes to dry off. In the meantime, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we can crack on with the next stage. So the next stage of painting our gauge pods is gonna be the primer. I've got specialist plastic primer here designed for painting plastic. Because it's February and it's in the UK, it is extremely, extremely cold today. We're talking around about five degrees Celsius maximum. Now the problem with that is painting in that kind of temperature can have an unwanted effect on the paint. It can make it not spray evenly, there can be moisture in it, you can get lumps in the final paint finish if you're not careful. Ultimately it ruins it. Thankfully though to counter that I've got this, the lovely hairdryer that I used to warm the base of the car up when I was doing the sound deadening. It's going to be the same story here. I'm going to spray each of the cans I use before I use it to make sure we get the best possible paint finish. I don't need to get it hot but just a little bit warmer is going to help the quality of the final product. Okay then, so our plastics have been stripped down, rubbed down, prepped so they're nice and smooth. They've been cleaned with the white spirit. They've all dried out. Our primer has been warmed up and is now ready to spray. It's time to crack on with it. So first up, plastic primer on all three of these. And we're going to do three gradually built up coats of it. Cap off. Good old shake and an initial dust coat. So, let's get on with it. Now you might notice it's not perfect, to be honest with you, I'm not the best rattle can painter, but frankly, it's not too much of an issue at this point because they are all covered with a base dusting layer of primer and we are gonna do two more coats. Now cue 10 minutes of waiting and another coat. Reality check moment, paint left outside in the UK in February does not take 10 minutes to dry. It was actually more like 25 before it was even remotely resembling dry. But it is now dry, and as you can probably work out by the fact that you have eyes and this is a camera filming a thing, I am now putting on the second coat. And obviously, as is the case with all painting things, go a little bit thicker with your second coat because we all like when things go a little bit thicker. And I am just gonna go a little bit deeper on here so we can start building up our primer. Don't be tempted to go too thick with this though because if you get runs in it, runs in your primer still might show through to your final coat finish. So don't go mental. As soon as it starts to look glossy, hold off because that's the world's way of telling you, calm down Buster Brown, you're about to overdo it. That's coat number two done, and now thanks to Britain's frankly tropical climate of roughly five degrees, coming up is another three weeks of drying time before we do the final coat of primer. Change of camera angle to make me doing the same thing for the third time a little bit more interesting to watch. This is our final coat of primer before we can start throwing our mad new colour on. Don't rush to the end because you will ruin it like a big idiot. Don't be a big idiot. Be a small, clever person. Or a big clever person, we don't discriminate. 
Right, last coat of primer is now done. It's not 100% perfect, but once again, I'm not the best rattle can sprayer in the world. This can is pretty much empty, and at the end of the day, this is just the primer stage. We now need to give this around about a year and a half to dry, then we can start with our actual paint. So uh, cue the waiting, and in my case, another cup of tea. If you've never been to this channel before, I pretty much paint everything with rattle cans in satin black. This one particular, because it just works really well, and it looks awesome when it's finished. Right back to the first Super Sacento episode, I used this on my original alloy wheels. To keep it consistent, I'm going to be painting my gauge clusters in this as well. However, as I said earlier, it's cold and I'm painting, which means I've got to get my handy hairdryer and warm them up. Once again, I'm very consistent. So, um, yeah, warming about to happen. <laughs> Told you. Right then, three coats of primer are now completely dry, so it's time for our lovely satin black to go on. And once again, as with the primer, your first coat is a dust coat and nothing more. So, quick paint test. And we're happy with that. Right now, let's crack on. First coat of black is done and so is this can of paint. So let's give it 15 minutes, warm up a new can and then crack on with the second coat. You join me doing what I just said I was going to be doing and I'm now going slightly thicker on as you should do with your coats. The more coats you do, the thicker you go on. Easy peasy. So now I'm going to do that. Carry on. Second coat done, now we wait. The third and final coat is the thickest yet, and since this is the one that's gonna show through the lacquer, it's crucial that this one is perfect. You join me 24 hours later, when the plastic's been left overnight in the garage to dry off. We have a bit of a problem. So I've gone to look at all the pieces of plastic we painted yesterday. They've dried overnight. Obviously, they've been in the garage all night. And some of the paint hasn't gone quite as well as we'd hoped. I don't know if you can see in there. There's these sort of little beaded bits. All these little gaps here. And I think what that might be to do with is the fact that I left each coat to dry outside. That's the primer, that white that you can see there. Because obviously, this plastic isn't white underneath. So between the layers of primer and paint going on, there's been a little bit of interference shall we say and there is some on the rev counter gauge as well you can see there crap is the main expression coming to mind right now and what this means is we've got a bit of work to do basically i do have a plan and that plan is to build them up again i give the plastics two more dust coats of black to make sure they're all on the same level and in between them i shut the garage door to make sure that nothing in the air is blown onto them and ruins them again yeah do as i say not as i do when it comes to letting your paint dry and it's worth noting that my dad's bike in the background does actually have a cover on it before you all panic in the comments Next, it's onto three increasingly thick coats of lacquer, and I've gone for the same semi-matte or satin finish that I went for on the door mirrors and bonnet badge. I'm not putting quite as many layers on these because obviously gauges don't tend to get pelted with as much road grime as stuff on the outside of the car does. And I went for the satin finish once again because it's going to be the best match for my interior. Matte would look a little bit weird against all the standard fixtures and fittings, and gloss is going to reflect too much in the windscreen. I just want to point out another reason here why I like cheaper cars and why I like older cars and that is because you feel like you can have a go with this kind of thing like if I had a Fiesta ST a two or three year old one that was still worth like 10 or 12 grand would I want to be pulling the interior apart myself and rattle canning bits of it no no I would not because I love the idea with an older car you can have a go. Just take it apart, rattle can it in your garage, see what happens, have a go. With three thick layers of lacquer on there, the plastics then get 24 hours in the garage to harden and dry properly before it's time for a refit. So there we have it then, the Speedo and Rev Counter surrounds completely re-sprayed. And in my opinion, this is one of the best, if not the very best mod you can do to your interior. It's easy, it's quick, it's cheap at less than 20 quid to do the whole job. And depending on what colour you go with, you can nicely update and transform the look and feel of your car's interior. I'm going to refrain from fitting these in the car for the time being, and you'll see why in the next episode of Super Sacento. Get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you're notified when that happens. And I'll catch you then, everybody. Thanks very much for watching and have a good one.